Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Seving. Well, RJ Designs has done it again. She's come up with another way to make the Jelly Roll rug. This time it is a circular version and it is called Colossal a Round Rug. It's basically Jelly Roll Rug Pie. So it's her third version of it. And if you've done one before and you think, I don't need the pattern, I'll be able to figure it out. Let me tell you, you need it. When I was reading through it and going over the instructions for how to do that center part, I would never have come up with that to get it to start going round and round. So pick up the pattern, even if you have the other two, support RJ Designs and the Jelly Roll Rug that we all love because she's the one who came up with it. But go get that. Um, everything else that you need is pretty similar to the other Jelly Roll Rugs. And so you need some batting. There are two sizes for the Colossal. There is the regular, which uses one Jelly Roll. I'm going to use Ombre Stitches which is a basic collection from QT Fabrics. I really like it because it is, has the rainbow in it, but it's kind of neutral. And so I think it will work in a lot of spaces. And it kind of reminds me of like the traditional rag rugs that you may have seen your grandma make in terms of the way the color works. So I think that that's gonna work really well. If you're doing the larger size, you're gonna need double of everything. That's 100 yards of the two and a half inch wide batting rolls, as well as two of the strip rolls. And you need to do the small one, you need 50 yards of two and a half inch wide batting. I highly recommend you go with the Bozal um, batting rolls for this. You can either get 225s or 150 yard roll. They both work just the same and they're super, super thin. I did one with batting. You can see the video on it where I show you how to fix it if it isn't flat, but it was so challenging for me to get my one that I made with scrap batting to be flat. And this is basically one gigantic circle. So there's no way I'm even going to attempt this without the super thin batting that's meant to be with the Jelly Roll rug. I'm also gonna use a pair of machiners quilting gloves to help me grip it as I'm going around and going nice and slow. Uh, Marion's Best Press is a must have for this so that way you can press it and keep it flat as you're going around. Then you also need a jeans needle in your sewing machine and a walking foot to help move all the layers through as you're going. Um, optional, but good to have are going to be pins or clips so that way you can help keep it together as you are going round in the circle. And the best sewing machine you can get your hands on. The more expensive a sewing machine, typically the larger the feed dogs that come with that and the better able the machine is to handle all those layers going through. So you can do this on more of a basic level sewing machine, but you're gonna have to go really slow and be really deliberate to make it flat. And you may wanna start with the oval rug to get that down first before you move on to the colossal round version. Um, but the better the sewing machine you can get your hands on, the easier it is going to be because the sewing machine is gonna do a lot more of the work for you. Well, let's get started. So this rug starts out exactly like the oval version. So if you've done that before, you're gonna make that big round coil again, but you're gonna start by unrolling your jelly roll and deciding what order you want to keep them in. Now, whenever these are packaged in a um, two and a half inch strip roll, not all two and a half inch strip rolls are jelly rolls, that's actually a copyrighted term by Boda. So this one is not technically a jelly roll, but whenever you unwrap a two and a half inch strip roll, they're already in an order that's really pleasing to the eye because someone who's a professional has done that for you. So if you want, you can just go with it in the order that it is, and I'm probably gonna do that. One thing you may wanna keep in mind is whatever is going to be the blunt end of your, or the end of it, is going to end up on the inside. So the blunt end ends up on the inside and the tapered end ends up on the outside. So when you're deciding what end is gonna be what end, you may wanna think about that. So if you live at a home with a lot of dogs and cats and there's dander and stuff that is going to get on it and get dirty, then you may wanna consider going with a darker color on the outside because it's gonna show less of the dirt. Um, 
I have had these all over the floor at our shop at quiltlagsnamas.com. I've washed them, I've vacuumed them. They really are holding up really well and they are not showing the dirt like you think you would. So even if you're like, I wouldn't wanna put all that work into it and then put it on the floor, it can take it. It's, it can take it really well. Granted, I'm not gonna leave them down when it starts to snow here in the Midwest. I'm gonna pick them up so that we don't have slushy feet on them. But as long as you know, you're just walking around you know, in your bare feet or your sock feet at your house, it's gonna be just fine. Don't worry about it, it'll be good. So I'm just going ahead and keep it in the order that it is. And now I need to sew this together like it is the biggest strip of binding I have ever made in my life. It is about four times the width of a king size quilt binding once you get this all together. So whenever I'm sewing quilt binding together, I always lay it out next to my sewing machine with the raw edge just going toward where my needle is. That way I can just grab it and sew it together really nicely and easily. One thing you wanna make sure you do, here's my number one tip for binding is when I put these together, I like to overlap them a little bit and I'll have the piece that's coming toward me with the right side down and the piece that's going off to the left perpendicular to me going with the right side up. So that way I can sew from my top left to my bottom right. I don't have to pin or anything. You can if you want to and I don't have to draw a line, but if you wanted to pin across here and across here and then draw your line from where the corners come together down to the corners come together here and then go ahead and stitch. I've got my sewing machine set on the center stitch that makes it easiest for me to do it. And one thing I forgot to mention is that you will need an entire spool of RFL thread for this. At this point, it doesn't really matter what color, but once you start sewing it together, it does. I'm gonna go ahead and use white for this because it's a really white background, so I think it's gonna look good um, with everything else. I could also probably pretty easily go with a dark gray or a light gray for that. And all the supplies for this are available at shop.quiltaddictsnamas.com. We have all three of the Jelly Roll Rug patterns and we've got you good to go there. Now, if you want, you can chain piece this. Um, one of our teachers in our class recommends this all the time for binding. I've never done it this way before today, but it certainly makes a whole lot of sense when you have so many to do. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the piece that you just sewed that is still underneath uh, your sewing machine and you're gonna put it right sides up going from left to right. So the selvage is on the right here and then the rest of the piece is going off to the left and I've got it right set up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab the second piece that is next on my jelly roll and I'm gonna lay it across just like I did originally. So it looks just like this and I'm gonna take it right over to the sewing machine and this way I don't have to break any thread at all can just slide this in right up to where my needle is down and I can keep on sewing. All right, I'm gonna keep on doing this until all of them are together and then we are ready to cut them apart and start stuffing this. So now I have a gigantic pile of binding strips and we need to get all of the edges trimmed off and pressed open just like you would if you were preparing binding. So first up, I'm just going to lay that down on my cutting surface. Align the quarter inch mark of my ruler up with the seam that I sewed down there. And then just trim that off. And I'm gonna do that for all of the corners for the entire jelly roll. All right, at this point, you're gonna be covered in fuzz from the pinky and shears on your jelly roll. It's okay, you just need a lint roller later. So now what we have to do is we need to press the seams open and that will help keep everything as flat as possible when we're making our rug. And as you're doing that, make sure you are folding it into about 12 inch increments so that way it's really easy to manage. You want whatever you want to be on the outside of your rug 
to be on the top when you are finished. So that doesn't mean you have to start out with it on the top, you can just flip it over, but make sure that that is on the top for the taper. So I finished sewing all my strips and laying them out after I press my seams open in a fan fold. And if you're doing it the large version, you're gonna sew two jelly rolls together. I'm doing the smaller one, so I've just done one here. And I've got the strip that I want to be on the outside on the top because we need to do a taper for that. And I'm gonna put my walking foot on my sewing machine. For those of you who have not seen a walking foot before, they usually have a claw-like attachment here and that operates a second set of feed dogs on top, and that moves in conjunction with your feed dogs on your sewing machine to move all the layers through at the same speed. So you wanna have the best walking foot you can for this, and the best sewing machine you can for this part of it, so that way it will the machine will do the work for you and your rug will be nice and flat. So I'm gonna put this on my machine, and then I'm going to start stuffing these strips. Now I've worked with Roma from RJ Design, to show what we can and cannot show. We want you to support the pattern designer, we want you to buy the pattern, and so I'm not gonna give you everything here. Um, so you have to look at the instructions inside the pattern to see how to do the taper. That's the part that ends up on the outside so that you don't end up with a blunt edge on your round rug. That would look a little weird, but it shows you how to cut and stuff your fabric so that way you kind of have a pointy end on the outside. So make sure you refer to your pattern so that way you know how to do that. We're gonna pick up after I've already done that to show you how I stuff this together. All right, so I've got my taper sewn and I will tell you that that is a lot easier if you pin it or use clips to get that together. I also start about oh, probably 12 or so inches down past where the, it's back to the regular two and a half inch width. And then I stitch toward the tip and then I backtrack. And that is a lot easier than trying to start with your feed dogs with that tiny little taper at the end. So those are the tips I'll give you about sewing a taper. Hopefully that will make sense as you are also reading and following along with your pattern. So now for stuffing this, you have two options. One, you could pin this with clips. Um, we use Quilters Perfect Clip here at the Quilt Addicts Anonymous, um, but I find that it's really easy to just stuff it and it goes pretty quickly for me. So here's what I do, is while it is on the machine, I will fold it in half both ways here and then meet those edges. And then I take my finger and I just run it through that center to hold it down. And then I'm just gonna stitch down the center, holding that in place until I get to the point where I have held that together. And it really only go as far as will fit on my sewing machine. And I'm not worried about anything beyond that because this is a lot of fabric and it, you just have to take it a little bit at a time. So now I'm going to realign again, folding the top in first and then the bottom to meet in the center. Slide my pointer finger through and go from there. And I tend to stitch down the center of mine, but if you find that you're having trouble getting this to work and you're having some raw edges poke out, just stitch a quarter inch away from the left side instead, and then you won't have to worry about any raw edges poking out at all. If you have a little bit here and there, it's not the end of the world because it's gonna be concealed when you do your zigzag stitch to turn it into a rug, but um, you don't want it to be all the time. So, show that one more time, and then I've got a lot of sewing to do to get these all together. All right, fold that in half, slide my finger through, and keep on stitching. All right, I am gonna keep going until I've gotten my entire jelly roll stuffed. If you're doing the large size, you're gonna be stuffing two jelly rolls worth. For the regular strip roll size, the one that's 40 inch strips, you're gonna use two of the batting rolls. If you're doing the large size, you need four of them. Or if you're using the 50 roll size, I have a 25 yard one here. If you're using a 50 yard one, you're gonna need two of those for a large or one 
for a small one. They're both about the same price. It's just originally they made it into 25 yard ones and now the company that makes it is switching over to 50 yards. So depending on when you watch this video, you may still be able to get the 25 yard ones or go with a 50, you know, it, six of one, half dozen the other. It's all good. Just make sure you have 50 yards if you're doing one strip roll or 100 yards if you're doing the big size. All right, so I'm about four strips in, so I'm gonna start my coil now. And the easiest way I found to do it is to just sort of wrap it around your hand a few times. And you wanna make sure you're not twisting this as you go. Um, that will help when it comes time to sew everything together. And so once I've got it around a couple of times, then I change directions, making sure to untwist anything here. And I'm gonna go around here. And I like to twist the coil, not this around like that, because that's where you introduce your twist. So if you are just turning this to create your ball, then you're gonna have fewer twists to worry about and you'll be good to go. So it starts off really small, but when it's done, it's gonna be about the size of a basketball. So we've got our, our little wall started. I'm gonna keep on going, keep on sewing everything through, and until this is all done, and we've sewn through two of our batting rolls and the entire jelly roll. And again, if you're doing the big size, it's gonna be two jelly rolls and four of the 25 yard batting rolls or two of the 50 yards. So go ahead and keep on sewing and I'll meet you back when we've got a coil the size of a basketball. When you get to the very end, you're gonna to wanna to cut your batting strip so that is an inch or two shorter than the end of your piece and then fold it in half over it. That way you have a nice finished edge when you put it together. And of course you would do that all when you're on the sewing machine. I just pulled it off so you could see it a little better here. When I get to the very end, I'm gonna reinforce the stitches by sewing backward and forward. Just so I know that that's nice and secure. Okay, so the next part I'm not allowed to show you on camera. Roma with Our Day Designs asked that I not show you how to get that center started because that information is in the pattern and of course we want you to support the pattern designer. I'm a pattern designer and that's part of how we make our living and that's part of how Roma makes hers. So go buy the Jelly Roll Rug Colossal Pattern to see how to do the center. I will tell you that I am really good at figuring stuff out and I would not have thought of starting it out the way that she started it out. And so you definitely wanna give it a try. She's done a lot of these. She knows the tips and tricks and the instructions are really clear. So check that out. You can get the pattern over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. One of the things I really need to do before I start doing the zigzag stitch around is I need to clean my machine really well. One of the reasons why you may have trouble getting your rug to lie flat is if your feed dogs are not working properly. And we just sewed a whole lot of batting and that pushes fuzz down into your sewing machine. So you're gonna to wanna to take your sewing machine apart and make sure you clean out, especially in between those feed dogs. Take the plate off and get in there and get all that out. That way your machine is able to run as well as it is capable of doing and you're gonna have less issues with getting your rug to lay flat. Also, if you don't have an extension table, now's a good time to pull out all your craft books and stack them up so that they're nice and level with your sewing machine surface because you need a nice level surface to work with if your machine doesn't sit inside the cabinet. So I've started sewing my center together and I'm not allowed to show you the very center on camera. So you're gonna to have to read the pattern for that. But I am able to give you some tips and tricks on how to keep this flat. So as you can see, I've gotten all my books out and I've got that out on my table to make it as level as possible. I've got my coil ball sitting in a tray to the right of my sewing machine. You could also put that on the floor or between your legs. You just wanna make sure that it's not twisting as it's coming off the coil to your sewing machine. The other thing I've done is I have done a zigzag stitch and there's some recommendations in the setting. I like my stitch to be as wide as my sewing machine will allow it to be. That way I have no trouble catching both sides as I'm sewing around. 
And the biggest issue that people have is their machine either, or the rug either gets wavy, which is not good because it's a tripping hazard, or it becomes a bowl. And there's two things that do it. If you become a bowl, that means you're pulling this part too much as you're going through it, so it's too tight. If it gets wavy, it means you're easing in too much, so you kind of have to find the happy medium for that. I found the best way for me to get that happy medium is one, cleaning those feed dogs so they can work really well, and two, I have decreased the speed on my sewing machine for this part of the rug. So normally I sew at the fastest speed possible. I reduce it to the medium speed. That way I'm not gonna be chug along going as fast as I can because I just wanna see it finish because they're so pretty. I'm really taking my time and going through there. And then I'm easing in a little bit as it goes. And I'm gonna show you how to do that here. So now this part, you almost kind of have to practice a little bit. So maybe make like a trivet. Um, before you do this with just like a couple, like three to four strips is enough for like a hot pad trivet. And that'll get you the practice needed to do it. But what you wanna do is give it just a little bit as you're going through there, almost so it looks like you've got like a little bump of extra fabric here. And it looks like it's not gonna lay flat, but it does when it comes around the other side. And it just needs that little bit extra. But again, if you give it too much extra, you're gonna have a wavy rug. And if you pull this too tight, then it's going to wanna become a bowl for you. So just practice. If it's your first time doing this, again, maybe start with a trivet, three, four strips of fabric, and that's enough for a nice little hot plate on your table. And But you just wanna give it a little bit extra. And you're pushing that outside strand here you're just pushing it in just the teeniest bit as you ease around that curve. So I really am kind of just holding this part nice and flat, and then I'm just giving it a little bit of a push um, with my right hand with that bit coming off your coil. And you can see here that it is nice and flat and curved, and the pieces look nice and even. There's no curling up. It's not getting wavy at all. It just looks real nice, even though it looks like it shouldn't be when we're giving that little push. So I'm gonna keep going round and round, and we're just gonna keep going to the end, and I'll show you how to finish this up. But again, slow and steady is gonna win the race here. If you're using the big, giant one, make sure you are working on the biggest surface you can possibly work on, like your dining room table. Maybe get something going off to the side here, so that way you've got a nice flat surface to work on, because that's the key. You need a really flat surface, you need to take it slow, you need to use the best machine you can get your hands on and make sure it's super clean by cleaning out those feed dogs first. So let's keep going round and round and we'll be done soon. When you get to the very end, you have two options. The pattern suggests that you tuck the end underneath. I prefer to have it just come to the edge and that taper helps make it look a little bit nicer and then you don't have a bump at the very end that you might trip on. And then when I hit the very end, I'm going to reverse my stitches quite a bit. I'm gonna go back and forth probably three or four times here. 
just so I know that that is not going to come apart with use. All right, so this is it. I will take some photos of it and show it to you on camera as well. It is completely, perfectly flat. I didn't iron once and I didn't use spray starch once in order to get it this way. What I did is I just slowed down that sewing machine, so I was sewing at about half speed, and then I just took it super slow, made sure I was easing in, and you ease in a little bit less as you get to the wider curves toward the edge, but you need to ease in quite a bit when you get to that center. But you just have to go slow and steady, and if it starts to wave at all, or if it starts to roll up, then you need to make the adjustments needed. If it gets wavy, it means you're easing in too much. If it gets rolling up, that means you're pulling the strip too tight as you are sewing it together from the coil. And I found that while you can press it to death with your spray starch and your iron, over time, those areas are gonna bubble back up and you're not gonna have a flat rug. And I found that with the first oval one that I did, I found it with the one that I fixed and showed you guys how to do on the video. So while you can perform minor miracles with this, eventually the fabric is gonna wanna come back up. So it is much better to just get it flat to start with without needing your spray starch and your iron than it is to try to force it to be flat because it's not gonna wanna stay that way over time. One other thing that was super critical was making sure that I took all my books, I've moved my sewing machine now, but my sewing machine fit right in here, and then all my books were level with my bed of my sewing machine. So that way I was working with a nice flat surface. If you're doing the giant one that uses two strip rolls, you're gonna need a really big surface to work with. Part of the reason why I decided to do just the regular size one was because I knew I had a small space hidden here to work with and I didn't want to overdo it and then end up with something that was floppy. Because once it starts to bend over the side, that's where those rolls start to be created. But I actually, I finished this mostly last night, and then I just left a little bit to sew on camera here for you. And this thing is laying super flat on my dining room table, and it is just fabulous. And it's not with any extra ironing, any extra pressing. So if you're having issues, just rip it back to the point where it starts to have a problem and restitch, and you'll be a lot happier with that. Um, thanks so much for following along. Again, you can get all the supplies you need to make the oval, the original Jelly Roll Rug pattern, Jelly Roll Rug Squared, which is the rectangle version, and now Jelly Roll Rug Colossal, which is the circle version. You can get all of that at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. We've got all three patterns. We have all the supplies you need to make them. And of course, we have videos on how to do each one of them now, plus how to wash it so you can see how it turns out and how to fix it if it isn't flat. So I'm gonna just put a playlist of all our Jelly Roll Rug tutorials in the description for this, and you can watch that as many times as you need to to get this flat. Thanks so much for following along, and until next week, happy quilting.